Good morning, folks. Today we report that our streak came to an end at 7. After almost a whole month, we finally missed a big earthquake. We've got a peek in on space weather first, however, and as always, we're over at spaceweathernews.com checking out the last day on our star and finding more calm behavior. However, we do have some plasma filaments on the disk worth seeing. Start at the bottom where the southern filament lifts and snaps into the corona without major ejecta. Next, see the C-shaped filament crossing center disk, and then two coming over the limb into view and reaching towards the equator. We'll monitor them for eruptions. Solar flaring remains utterly pitiful as the lone sunspot worth monitoring on the disk remains 100% negative umbral magnetism, and that positive surface area behind it isn't like having a positive sunspot there. It's calm as can be right now. The solar wind has plateaued. We remain at elevated particle speed, but the consistency has allowed Earth's magnetosphere to find a measure of equilibrium and begin to calm down from the level 2 storm event we reported yesterday. We could see reverberations, however, even without another stream intensification. Unfortunately, Earth's shield is just struggling in general these days. Plasma penetration into the atmosphere doubled for a few hours over northern Europe last night. Of course, the intense solar wind is flowing from those dark corona holes turning out of view now. We expect their intense streams to leave our planet in another day or two, but we can already pick out the next one. Behind the incoming sunspot and southern plasma filament, in that big area where it seems like nothing is happening, that's the southern coronal hole getting ready to swing in. We'll have a much better view of it by tomorrow morning. Folks, our streak ends at 7. A magnitude 6.6 .6 earthquake struck Tajikistan yesterday, and that area was not on alert. Our thoughts are with them. For more on the now-ended streak and more on earthquake predictions in general, go to quakewatch.net. Interesting new paper out with some of our favorite solar terrestrial physicists. Both Ogertsov and Veritanenko are involved in the latest affirmation of solar-driven climate forcing on northern Europe, finding direct correlation beginning shortly after the Maunder minimum. For those who wondered about the shutdown of one of the world's most hyped reactors two weeks ago during a geomagnetic storm event, it was indeed confirmed a short circuit that triggered the shutdown as solar wind speed was rising from a coronal hole stream. Similarly, Hurricane Otto became the latest Uyen storm intensification event as it re-strengthened into hurricane status when it should have been weakening over land, and that was just as this current coronal hole stream was beginning, the storms from which are just ending now. Top storms to watch going forward, New England and eastern Canada will get snow off that low spinning offshore, but the real story is out west. This one is going to rapidly intensify after taking on the western states and become the first major storm of the cold season in the U.S. Last week was nothing. This is a monster and it's time to unpack all the winter gear if you haven't already. Ski season probably underway in the Scandinavian mountains with that storm coming down out of the Arctic. So glad Vikings is back in four days, by the way. Same storm parked by Portugal that we saw yesterday and affecting areas to the east. A number of storms are spinning near the South Asian candy cane in the southwest Pacific. Most major one is the typhoon that just left the Philippines and is headed north at Taiwan. Next, you'll see a storm pop off the southern part of South America, but its convergence reaches back and will cause major flood concerns for prone areas across the affected southeast continental region. On a global scale, this is how you track your weather and we're using Null School's wind map for this as opposed to Windy TV. Purple to red is low pressure here and yellow to white is high. Watch how the lows will all suck in the tropical moisture and bring it into their systems. The water vapor becomes clouds as it energizes and accelerates towards the low, driving the storm conditions we see on a regular basis, always following that convergence line into and towards the low. This weekend, we're getting the beta users of the app ready to launch on either Apple or Android platforms. Kickstarter founders who emailed us looking for that initial beta email will be in a resend batch sent soon. For all intents and purposes, the wait is over, and this week, beta testing of the disaster prediction app goes beyond my hands and into yours. We've got shots of our star to close. It's 4.25 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.